history doesn't have to rhyme. It can just repeat instead, over and over and over, in fact. What are the patterns that consistently form before big moves in the market? Well, the answer is hiding right in plain sight, and you're looking at it right now. They are alternating patterns, alternating candlestick colors, green, red, green, red, or red, green, red, green. But it can't be that simple. Or can it? I'm going to show you on the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, the VIX, and the dollar, how the patterns repeat over and over again before big moves happen. So let's get right on into it. Here is the NASDAQ futures. Specifically, it is the date 523, May 23rd. The interval that is critical is the four hour time frame up here. Green, red, green, red, green. What happened after that happens? Big moves goes up. Let's zoom on in to this next green arrow. Green, red, green, red, green. What happens after that? Big move down. Okay. Go to this arrow. July 12th. Red, green, red, green. Big, big move up all the way to August 15th. Okay. On this example, I want to call out something very, very particular and peculiar. Here's what I just showed you. I decided to draw a trend line to, not, not a trend, uh, a, a best fit line, a best fit line to match this pattern right here. Just draw it right through it as best as possible. Because look what happens. goes all the way up the hill, doesn't it? All the way up the incline. And it just so happens to call it coincidentally. I don't think so, but look at the contact points with the candlestick wicks along the way on the incline. Here, see that? Again here, up here even at the bottom of this, and again here. Oh, well, we look at that here. Again here. Okay. Again here. Over and over and over again. How is it that that line contacts perfectly with the alternating red, green, red, green? That is not an accident, my friends. Okay, now let's go to the top. This is the infamous, well, the infamous date is August 16th here. Here, let me, let me zoom on in. And what do we have yet again? Red, green, sorry, green, red, green, red, green. And I decided to draw another trend line through that because it just fits perfectly, okay? And what happens after this red, green? Here comes the big move down, okay? Now, I will say, so far, what I've shown you, these red, green, red, green, are all in extended hours and pre-market. They are not during the trading day. But I have seen in other indexes, like the S&P 500 or the dollar or the VIX, I have seen that occur during the trading day. So I'm only making that uh, observation with the NASDAQ, okay, like for over, over here at the beginning of July. See, this is 8 p.m. This is in that time frame. See that? That's extended hours. So it's not like we had any control over it, but the significance of the pattern that's occurring during extended hours cannot be ignored, I'll say. Okay, drawing the big trend line down, look at this. How perfectly it touches, okay? How perfectly it touches again over and over 
right? Until it gets down to what? Oh, will you look at that? Red, green, red, green. It touches, it crosses that perfectly too. And what did this one represent? A big move up, but then there is a collapse, okay? There is a collapse. There was something that happened on that day. I'd have to go back and recall what that is. It wasn't any big news from the Fed, but nonetheless, as you see, look at that. This line, this line keeps crossing key contact points again again and again and again and again okay but i want to contrast this observation the vast majority of uh you know because i was watching at the time the vast majority of youtubers were drawing let me just make it purple line lines like this Right, trying to draw like, oh, well, it's, you know, meeting the tops of this, meeting the tops of this, meeting the tops of this, let's see what happens. Or let me just not do that. Or they'll try, you know, or when that happened, well, maybe we need to start drawing that line. But as you see, it the whole time it never reached. So essentially what I'm saying is the best fit line which goes through the data in this case this is another best fit line is more predictive of where the trend is going over a traditional for example trend line that's a trend line right a best fit line for me is better than a trend line okay and i can show you i'll, sh I'll prove it to you Here's another example. Let's see. Let me zoom in. I'll, um, I'm doing this only because uh, I've studied it so much and I already know what, what, what it's going to do. But this is an example of a a, a best fit line that I just drew that purple line. Look at that goes through Friday, the 18th, uh, last trading day, a couple days ago, last week, this past week, I mean, see that? It hits contact points perfectly, 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 perfectly. Best fit line is better than trend lines because best fit lines are predictive not re trend lines are reactive right <clears throat> the trend line a trend line is reactive because you have to wait for the trend to form <laughs> right uh, before you can draw the line right but a best fit line it tells you uh, no this is where it's probably going okay right so let's get back to um, the arrows okay <clears throat> now what do we have here this is basically we're now at the bottom. Uh, we've been falling from since since uh, August, right? And we're now in October. Okay. Uh oh, what do we have? Red, green, red, green. Soon after my favorite date, 10, 13, October 13th, when the Dow dropped 500 points, but yet finished the day plus 800, over 1500 point swing in one day. Impressive. This was a key. It was telling you one, two, three, four, f four. We'll just say four. Four trading days ahead of time. A big move is coming. Okay? And that's exactly what happened. Up. But look at this. When you got up to the top, what do we have here? Green, red, green, red. Uh oh. And what happens? Down we go. Now look at this. This is interesting. This is a cluster of them. This is a cluster of them. Okay. Green, red, green, red. Big move up. Green, red, green, red. Big move down. 
Green, red, green, red. Big move up. That's where we are. Leads us to this week. And I end this NASDAQ session with green, red, green, red. That was on Thursday this past week. What does that mean then? Is there something big coming this way? Okay. So let's see what happens. Now let's just move on. S&P 500 on the on 5 519 May 19th. Green red, green red. Green red. What happens after that? Big move. Okay? Now, I don't think I saw Yeah, I don't think I green well, hold on, it's right there. Green red red green red green let me go ahead and draw that in yeah i must have must not have taken right there and what do we know happens oh no down we go big move big 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 move this was the june low okay this was the june low right here june 17th yes June low. Okay. Now, we didn't have anything until July ish. Okay. So we, basically, it's this wasn't, well, I, I guess you say this is a big move relatively, but right here was not really a big move. It's when you saw green, red, green, red, green on July 14th, a month after the low. We did get a big move, didn't we? Up, 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 up. Right? This is S&P 500. Okay? Oops. Sorry to make you dizzy. And what do we know? Green, red, green, red. October, or sorry, August 16th. And we all know the story after that. Down, down, down. Okay? September 1st, red, green, red. Oh, sorry, green, red, green, red. What happens? Okay, there we go. We got a similar big move, but we got a consequence, uh, a fall after that. Corresponding fall. Okay. All right, so, and this is 9.30. Green, red, green, red. Got to move up. It does come back down, but it's not a fall. And what do we have here? 1020. Okay. Big move up. Comes down, higher low. Green, red, green, red. 11.3. Okay. That leads us to this past week. This is a big move up. Now, this is red, green red green this is a move down now i drew this best fit line not trend line best fit line because i believe the s p 500 is at the also at the bottom of its channel like the nasdaq like the nasdaq futures is and so you know I have other sessions that talk about the MACD. I won't get too much into that, but look, this is a four hours chart. Look at how high the MACD is above zero still. It's still got upward swing. So I think this green arrow represents the bottom of the channel. And I think, let's see. Yeah, we don't quite see it yet. I think it's, it's poised for a move upwards, okay? But I'm going to get into the VIX now, okay? The VIX 524. Red, green, red, green. What happens after that? It does go down. See that? It goes down. Red, green, red, green. Oop. Ooh, ooh. Big move. Big spike in volatility. <laughs> yes. Okay. Here, let me. But what happens at the top? What happens at the top? Green, red, green, red. We're going down. 
we sure did go down, didn't we? Okay. Down and down and down we go. Down and down and down we go. When was this? 614. Yeah. Yeah. 614. The June low. The June low. Down and down and down and down. I was looking. Aha. August. What do we have here? Red. Oops, sorry. Green, red. Green, red. And what happened? Boom, boom. Okay. Here's some more alternating colors. Green, red. Red, green. I'm sorry. Red, green. Down. But then it's going back up. Let's see. It does go down. And let's see. No, I do not see alternating colors here. Here, red, green, red, green goes down. Well, this is probably you don't see a red, green, red, green here because that's not, I wouldn't consider that a huge move up. Yeah, I wouldn't consider that a huge move. I would consider this one a <laughs> this one's a big move because it went from twenty seven ninety nine all the way up to thirty three eight. That's a big move, guys. You would all you would all agree to that. Any, any anything over thirty for the VIX, that's a big move. Okay. But as you can see over and over again, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. Alternates, gets to the top. Red, oh, green, red, red, green, red, green. Boom. Big move down. Big move down. And guess what I see here? This was this past week, the 16th. Uh oh. Red, green, red, green. Uh oh. What is that? Okay, so. <sighs> you know, one could interpret it as. A move down as opposed to comparing it okay going up is usually when it's at the bottom you see you see what i mean when there's a big move up it's because it's going it's bottoming this is at the top of something so this is more likely to go down not up okay see that anytime you're at the top like here or here the next move is down the next move is down. Okay. All right. So that's VIX. The US dollar. What do we have here? Oh, 914. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Red, green, red, green. And what happens? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Big move. Okay. Big, big move. Okay. But what happens when we get to the top of the dollar? Green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. This is a <laughs> big alternating color. And what happens? Down we go. Down, down we go. Okay. Oh, but looky here. We have returned. Red. Okay. Green, red, green, red. And what happens? Up we go. Okay. All the way up until 1020 last month. Red. Let's see. Green, red, green, red. And what happens after that? Down, down, down we go. Okay. So these are just examples. Uh, I don't study the dollar closely. So, you know, feel free to do your homework and also look at these patterns with your favorite security, particularly on, um, I found them on the, well, this is the one hour, but I did find them on the four hour. Okay. Now, so once again, here we go. 
Let me switch over to the four hour. That's right, okay. Green, red, green, red, green, or green, red, green, red. Down we go. Green, red, green, red. Down we go. Green, red, green, red. Down we go. See? That was, uh, yeah, that leads us to this past week. Okay? So, there you have it. Those are the various industry indices, I'm sorry, where the patterns repeat over and over and over again. Okay? Now, let's talk briefly, briefly about market symmetry. Have you guys ever wondered, or is it just me? I sit there and think about these things that don't really matter to anybody else. How is it that a snowflake, despite it falling hundreds, if not thousands of feet from the sky, in the wind, just floating aimlessly and randomly, right? Whatever, whichever way the, the wind wants to blow it or with, or however way it bounces off other snowflakes. But yet, despite all of that, it has perfect symmetry. Have you ever wondered why that is or how that is more specifically? How is it that a snowflake has perfect symmetry? despite all the what seems to be random events that occur around it, right? Just floating in the wind like a feather in Forrest Gump at the end of the movie, okay? I contend that markets have symmetry. There is symmetry in that madness, okay? There is symmetry in that madness. I want to share with you a nice quote from a French philosopher, Henri Bergson. The eye sees only what the mind is prepared to comprehend. Have an open mind, guys. Have a malleable mind. That is the, that's the takeaway from this quote. It's very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. Okay, and feel free to follow me on Twitter, where I do tend to post more daily you know, or intraday notifications as I see them, especially if I see something big or something significant happen. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up or please share it with others. Uh, click subscribe if you want to see more content from me and the notify button, please. And with that, I end today's presentation. And I am Agent 00. I will talk to you again soon.